Uh, hi, in the, uh, this presentation I will be explaining how can we use uh, PID controllers uh, to control different variables on a, in a game and I will be referencing uh, more specifically the case of the steering control. Uh, usually in games developed with a commercial or an in-house game engine, we need to control one or more variables that interact with complex uh, physics subsystems. Controlling a single variable can be a difficult task without knowing how the behavior of this variable was scripted. This, ca this task can be easily performed by a structure that is capable of controlling a variable based on its error when we make a uh, when, when we compare this, uh, this, its value with a reference value without the need of knowing the internal details of the implementation. This is the advantage of PID controller. Now, what is a PID controller? A PID controller uh, produces an output that can be used to affect a system and modify the value of a variable in a process based on the error between that variable and a desired uh, reference or set point. The PID controller takes the measurement of a variable and makes a comparison uh, with a desired value. And based on the error of this comparison, it gives an output that can be used to control the system and move the variable value to the reference. In a st an steering control in a vehicle, for instance, we want to control the angle of the vehicle to the target destination. This is our control variable. We want this angle to be zero. This is our reference value. And the output can be used as a steering force applied to the vehicle to make it turn left or right. So, in the steering, steering example, the PID controller will measure the current angle of the vehicle to the destination and computes an error. Then it generates an output that will be applied to the car and it will reduce the error aligning the vehicle progressively to the desired direction. If later the target changes its position, the PID will correct the new error again and the end result is that the vehicle will steer always towards its target. PID controllers can be used also to control position, speed, any kind of angle, rotation, scaling, propulsion jets, forces in physics system, etc. With the advantage that you can apply them to complex preconceived physics systems without knowing all the internal complexities of its implementation. Just its outputs and inputs. Now, how PID works. Understanding how PID controller works is not easy task. There are courses, courses that are dedicated to the study of this control theory to get the full comprehension of just this subject. However, I will try to give you a clear explanation for users, users that are not familiar with uh, control theory. PID stands for Proportional Integral Derivative, which represents the behavior of the output of this controller to the error calculated. As you can see in this formula, we, we can see a proportional term, an integral term, and a derivative term. As mentioned before, the PID controller computes the error between the measured variable and the reference value. With this error, the PID gives an output that has three components. Each one of the effects of these components can be modulated up or down or completely cancelled via parameters. The first component is a proportional component. The output value responds proportionally to the error produced. KP is the parameter to set how much of the error will affect the output. It is called proportional constant. Having only proportional effect provides good control. However, we have to deal 
with the steady state error problem. The control variable will never arrive exactly to the reference value. There will be a permanent error inherent in closed loop systems such as, such as this one, such as uh, the steering control example. It is called a steady state error. The second component eliminates this error by adding the integral value of previous errors. Ki is the integral constant and it modulates this effect. Now, the variable can reach exactly the reference, but adding an integral component produces an effect of overshoot and or oscillation of the variable before arriving, arriving to the final value. The third component reduces this bouncing by adding a value that depends on the derivative of the error. It applies an effect in advance to compensate to fast changes. KD is the derivative constant and it is used to modulate this effect. The three effects well, com uh, well combined and well tuned produces a smooth behavior correcting the control, the control variable every frame. Usually, using only PI, uh, meaning uh, proportional and integral effect, will do a beautiful job controlling your variable uh, accurately. Now, how to tune a PID? Uh, this is usually a try and error process. There are some techniques in automation domain uh, that have become uh, standard. Some auto-tuning algorithms uh, have been implemented also. However, there is no textbook solution for this. Uh, I suggest this procedure uh, is more or less like finding the best frequency in a radio receiver. First, set the proportional effect by increasing KP until minimizing the error just before seeing evidence of um, overshooting. Then, add a small integral value to, the, to reduce overshoot. Uh, the derivative effect, uh, you will not usually need it uh, unless you are trying to use the PID to control a fast changing process. If this is the case, add a small derivative value uh, for this particular, for this, uh, particular case. Uh, this is all for this uh, small introduction. Uh, uh, thank, uh, thank you very much.